36. 36 years. One more Maureen. Uh, worked in polygraph for a long time. Retired from the state trooper folks now runs his own polygraph business. With a partner of his who's not here today. So he's very interactive. He's got a lot of experience. You guys can ask all the questions you want, and if you have to answer them, we're probably going to be doing a lecture until about 30 minutes into this, and about 11:30 we're going to start picking people up. So if you want to volunteer and for the polygraph, please submit your name up here on a piece of paper, and then we'll pick from that, and then uh, see what happens from there. <coughs> Any questions before we begin? Let's give Barry Stevens a nice warm welcome. Appreciate you all being here this morning for this little presentation. Uh, I'm uh, here to, to teach this or instruct or, or demo this polygraph and try to tie it into your classes with communications that uh, Dr. Rue teaches. But I'm also here to, 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 if you have any questions or comments or anything that you'd like to ask about polygraph, because there's a lot of misconceptions about polygraph out, out in, the, in the real world be glad to talk about that too because I'd like to like to talk to you about what you want to hear uh, not just stand up here and drone on for for 30 45 minutes and, and and bore you to death and have you maybe you're sitting out there saying well I heard polygraph this or I heard polygraph that so uh, you know this is a in, in just like in any uh, communication scenario this is a, a two-way process you know I'll communicate but you can also communicate back okay does that sound like a plan Give me some type of, let me know you're out there. There you go, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get, get rowdy, let me know you're there. Um, I went to polygraph school for the state police in 1993 and did polygraphs pretty much up until the time I retired in 2010. Um, and since I retired, I've done a few for the Campbell County Sheriff's Office and now my partner and I are contracted with the city of Lynchburg to do pre-employment screening polygraphs. So uh, just in a nutshell, that's my, my, my experience and how we, we came, all came about being here today. Um, we're gonna, again, tie this into to your communications class. Um, got a little PowerPoint presentation that uh, is kind of fun to, to play with and go through. Um, I just, just, you know, look out here at all these young faces and I'm, I'm seeing this, this looks like UVA over here. What is, you got just, just UVA action? You don't have one of those shorts under that, do you? Oh, then you're not UVA. So anyway, no chuckles, no smile, nothing? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Say again? Yes, that was with lacrosse? Yeah, I caught that in the paper. Get them next time, right? <laughs> okay, Russ. <laughs> So what, how, how are we gonna relate polygraph to your class in communications? Uh, specifically, when we're, when, as, as investigators in any law enforcement capacity, one of the things that any investigator has to be good at is being able to read nonverbal behavior. Uh, and more specifically, certain changes in nonverbal behavior while uh, a, a, a suspect interview, for instance, is being conducted. Why is it important for an investigator to be able to pick up on changes in nonverbal behavior during uh, an, an interview about a, 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 a crime? Did anybody throw something out at me here? Yes, ma'am? Well, exactly, it really is. And you, 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 why is that? Okay, what causes those changes in, 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 in nonverbal behavior that the investigator is looking for. And what we're gonna talk about today and try to demonstrate that through the use of the polygraph is, is what causes those, those changes in nonverbal behavior when a person is subjected to uh, uh, artificially create, created stress. And the artificially created stress on the polygraph is the asking of the polygraph questions. Those polygraph questions are going to create stress for the person that's being administered the polygraph, right? Especially if they have committed a crime and they're being asked questions about that crime while they're connected to a polygraph instrument. Doesn't it make sense that those 
physiological aspects of the human body that cause those nonverbal cues to change would show up on the polygraph instrument, which is recording certain physiological aspects of the human body. Does that, does that sound logical? You know, if you can grasp that, then you already know basically how the mechanics of the polygraph work. And it gets into a little bit more uh, technique of polygraph because the examiner has to know exactly what questions to ask. And of course, he has to know how to operate the polygraph equipment. And then he has to know how to conduct a, 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 a proper interview. So one of the things, of course, is you know, you don't want to walk into a polygraph room and, and with the attitude, you know, that I'm the big bad cop and I'm here to, to, to make sure that I get the truth out of you. Of course, right away, you're going to create an artificial stress level in that person. What the investigator wants to do initially, if he knows what he's doing, is that he wants to try to bring that person's stress level down, build a little rapport. Have you ever heard that, that in, in the interview dynamic about building rapport? I, you know, I can't stress that enough. And we try to teach this in our basic law enforcement classes and it seems to, seems to just, the, the, the concept just doesn't seem to, to take, I don't know why. But wouldn't you feel much more comfortable talking to somebody that you like and you don't, you're not afraid of than someone who comes in as a big bully and then just tries to overpower you with their dominance? One of the basic concepts in any interview dynamic is to build rapport. So the, the Investigator first wants to build rapport, lower the person's stress level, because once that polygraph starts, he doesn't want to see stress demonstrated in those polygraph charts because he's a bully, because he's the cop, because he wears a gun, because he wears a badge. He needs to develop rapport. So having said that and kind of lay the groundwork, let's get into a little bit more about how the polygraph actually works and what we're recording. And hopefully our, our PowerPoint will work like it's supposed to. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But when I emailed it, it was working okay. So if, uh, if our routers didn't, didn't degrade our, our PowerPoint, hopefully it'll work okay. So here we go. We've got a typical subject there. He's all hooked up to the polygraph and he's, he's, he's ready to sit there and take this polygraph test. And you see that uh, he's got a couple of these tubes across his chest there. We've got them over here, and you'll see them later. And what they do is they record his breathing pattern. And he's got a blood pressure cuff there. And once that blood pressure cuff is inflated with air, that's going to record his cardio pattern. And the little things on his fingertips there, they're going to record what we call galvanics or electrodermal response, which in a kind of a, is a simplified explanation records changes in sweat gland activity. If a person is subjected to stress, do you think that those three components, those three physiological processes, would be important from a recording perspective on the polygraph? Breathing, cardio, and sweat glands. They're the three channels, if you will, that are recorded with, with, through the use of the polygraph. And once we get up here with our test subjects, our volunteers, and we ask our little, little classroom questions, nothing that's going to be overly embarrassing to anybody, I hope, uh, you'll see this, there's those changes taking place up here on the screen behind us. Okay? So let me see if I can get this to work. If, if, if we can get the cursor to go up, up there and... There you go, and it should just be able to click on it. Do you really grudge against McKenna Burns? No! All right, maybe I did, but I didn't shoot him. Checks out. No case in for you, though. Good, because I got a hot date today. Hot day. Dinner with friends. Dinner or not. Watching TV or not. All right. I'm going to sit at home and ogle the ladies in the Victoria's Secret catalog. See his catalog. Now, would you unhook this in any case? I don't deserve this kind of shabby treatment. Okay, that's benefit of, benefit of the Simpsons, right? <laughs> the polygraph, which is sometimes referred to as a lie detector. I'm sorry, I need to... Okay, 
How, what's my range here? Because I, okay, all right. <laughs> I can't stand still, I'm sorry. The polygraph, sometimes referred to as a lie detector, uh, and this is a misnomer because the polygraph does not detect lies. All the polygraph does is record certain physiological aspects of the human body. It doesn't measure anything. All it does is create these squiggly lines. It's up to the polygraph examiner to interpret those lines and make a determination as to whether or not the person is being deceptive or not being deceptive. Basically, it's the polygraph examiner's opinion. The polygraph does nothing but record the, the, those little squiggly lines, okay? Why is the polygraph not accepted as, as evidence in a criminal court proceeding? Because it's the examiner's opinion. It's an opinion, that's all. And like any opinion in a criminal, criminal uh, court uh, setting, opinion is, is, is expert testimony. And expert testimony is not direct evidence, okay? Anybody can have an opinion. You guys could look at the charts and come to your, come have an opinion yourself. But it's just an opinion, okay? The examiner has more training and experience, um, but it's just an opinion. So it's not, not accepted as direct evidence in a courtroom. That's a question that we get a lot, and that's, that's, that's why. Yes, sir? If it's not accepted as evidence, why is it so popular for people to do? Because it result, often results in confessions. In a criminal setting, the polygraph test will often call someone to, to confess in the interview room at the conclusion of the test. The examiner says, here's the polygraph charts. The polygraph clearly indicates that you're not being truthful about this, this, this crime. We need to talk about this. And a person will often say, well, I knew I couldn't beat the polygraph or, or, or whatever. Yeah, I did the crime, and this is why I did it. And yes, sir? But it's not just the report. How is it clearly obvious that they're lying? The examiner is interpreting the charts, and based on his interpretation of the charts, he has an opinion that the person is lying, but that's not evidence. If the person confesses at the conclusion or after the polygraph, because the examiner goes into a more intensive interview, if you will, based on his interpretation of the charts, which results in the confession, the confession is admissible. The polygraph charts are not. Anything that's said in the polygraph room is. So what's admissible is the confession, not the polygraph test. Does that make sense? Okay, it would be the same if the polygraph wasn't even there. The, the, the investigator brings a suspect in and they sit down and he starts going through his, his interview routine. And if he's a really, really good investigator, he, he's gonna offer the person a cup of coffee. He's gonna make small talk. He's gonna talk about his family. He's gonna talk about his job. And then he's gonna say something like, you know, I, I can understand how this happened. And I'm, I really feel, you know, I, I have a lot of sympathy for you, but we really need to get this straight before you leave today. Blah, 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 blah. Mr. Nice Guy, let's talk about what happened. All right, I'm sorry I did it. Same thing. In one scenario, the polygraph wasn't there. In the second scenario, the polygraph was, and it was a tool to get to this, this final product, which is the confession, okay? It's just part of an, of an interview process. Just one part of an interview process. Good? Okay. All right. Not a lie detector, just a recording device. Information that results from psychological stress. Stress causes changes in the body's basic systems which were recorded on the polygraph charts. Good enough? Give me an oorah. That's a weak oorah. Nobody gonna give me an oorah? Hey, that sounds better. Very, very quickly, and you know, this is um, high school anatomy or whatever you wanna call it, just very, very basic stuff. Um, you got the brain, central nervous system. The brain controls, of course, the heart, heartbeat, the, the uh, sweat gland activities, the skeletal muscles, uh, the things that, that the, that the uh, polygraph records. We won't get into all of the, the autonomic and the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Anybody in here taking nursing classes or anything? All that stuff sounds familiar to you? Stuff you discovered, you studied like the first day or something? Okay, then it's very, very basic stuff. We won't really beat you to death with that. 
another of the charts. Sympathize.